Well, oh, hi, Nook, I see you there. Um, I'm Mr. Matt or Mr. Imes, and welcome to the Nook. Nook is a class for around five, six, seven-year-olds, maybe even some precocious four-year-olds uh, with Pinecrest Church. I was just practicing my conch shell. I've gotten a lot better since last week, as you saw when you dropped in on me. Uh, still not the greatest, but maybe I'll try it next week, and we'll see if I'm any better. Now, I want to do, what I want to do first is I want to review what we spoke of last time. I remember two weeks ago was Easter. Now, God died and he rose again. Then last week, we were talking about Acts, where after God had gone back to heaven, he commissioned his disciples to go into the earth and proclaim his story and tell everybody, share his word. And we spoke about how we had, we had a toy, and this is a dancing unicorn. It's pretty neat, actually. Uh, pretty epic soundtrack on it, and um, it walks, talks, things of that nature, but we'll keep moving. But nonetheless, um, we talked about how those toys, for them to operate, they need a, a battery. Otherwise, they just sit there lifeless. Now... In the same way, we are talking about how we needed a battery as Christians. Do you remember the story? It was about John and Peter going to a synagogue, and outside, or I should say the temple, there was a begging man who could not walk. And the man wanted money, but Peter instead healed him. But he was only able to do it through the Word of God. So he needed to basically... Um, use God's power through him to heal the man. It wasn't his own words or his own doing. It was completely God. And what we basically talked about is how we need God, our battery, to basically do great things in this world. So one way you can recharge this battery is by being with Jesus, praying, taking time out of your day, acknowledging his presence, and that'll help you go, go through life and basically make the right decisions or at least follow the path that he has set out for you and allow you to be able to listen and look for it. So today, we'll be doing something a little different, but nonetheless, somewhat similar. Today, we're talking about Luke 4. And I'm just going to jump into here. I'm not reading from the Bible. I'm reading a paraphrase from our discipler teacher guide. So if it sounds a little different and you're wondering what version it is, don't worry about it. So before beginning his public ministry, Jesus was taken by the Spirit into the desert to be prepared for all his Father had planned for him to do. During his time of prayer and fasting, he was tempted by the devil but he came out of this time fully empowered to do the ministry that lay before him. Later in scripture, we often see Jesus going off to secluded places to be alone with his father. Jesus was one who knew better than any other the importance of solitude. So there you go. Sounds like Jesus was, cha was, Jesus was charging his battery. Now, Jesus was fully God, but he was also fully man. And he valued the time he had speaking to his father, God in heaven. Oftentimes, even though he could do anything and he was all powerful, he still spent time to charge his, charge his battery and be close with the Lord. You'll see him many times going off by himself after being surrounded by hundreds, maybe thousands of people, taking a moment of solitude, focusing himself and listening to the word of God and speaking to him basically through prayer. Now, unfortunately, again, as with all the classes that have been remote, we do not have a craft. I'm sure your parents, again, would love to do a craft with you. Just keep it clean, don't make too much mess, and keep the glitter off the carpet. But what we do have is we have the big God story. And I'm going to jump ahead, get it on my screen, and pull it up. So 
let me share my screen here really quickly. There it is, the big God story. And we are going to show this in terms of, we're going to show this in terms of pictures. So have you ever had to prepare or get ready before you did something? Has your mom or dad ever asked you to take a nap or rest when you have a big day ahead of you? How about going on vacation? What are some of the ways you prepare or get ready to go on vacation? Mm -hmm. Well, my kids basically probably tell me to pack all their toys and then forget to mention anything about clothes or any of the required goods. But, um, oh, but yeah, so maybe packing a suitcase would be a good example. So what are some of the ways you prepare to go to church? For me, it's always my Bible. And I'm like, I'm an adult and like a lot of adults, we drink coffee. I just drink it with black coffee in it, but I like to bring my own mug so I don't use uh, cups and it stays really warm. So with you, maybe you need to, to put on your shoes, brush your hair, put on your clothes, things like that. But don't forget, yeah, and like, um, oh, maybe you have a Bible too. So, um, so yeah, so there's basically the idea is that you have to prepare. So today we're going to talk about the big plans God the Father had for his son, Jesus. And I'm going to need um, your help. Every time I say the phrase, big plans, I need you to shout big plans. Can you do that? That's one way of saying it. So, so let's get into this. Are you ready? Okay. Today we're going to talk about the big plans. I said it. God the Father had his son Jesus. Um, it sounds like you're ready to begin. Okay. Okay, I need to get back into this. Um, make sure you're, okay, make sure you're listening um, for when I say, you know, those words. So, God the Father had big plans. What? <laughs> for his son, while he was here on earth. Jesus would be a great teacher and perform many miracles. He would heal the sick make the blind see, and even bring the dead back to life. Jesus would do all these things because he wanted to do everything his father asked him to do. The Bible tells us that while Jesus was on earth, he had a body like you and I do. His body got hungry and tired, and he even felt pain. Jesus was sometimes tempted to make the bad choice, like we do, but he never sinned. He never made a bad choice, not even once. When Jesus grew up, he knew it was time to prepare for the big plans. What'd you say? Big plans. That's right. I feel like I'm on Dora the Explorer or Dora la Exploradora. It's basically a children's show that um, you do a lot of reciting back and forth and you learn Spanish and how to navigate your numbers, things of this nature. You've probably heard of it. But nonetheless, um, his father had for him to teach um, and perform miracles. So the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the desert. He spent 40 days in the desert. 40 days is a long time. Can you hold up all 10 of your fingers? Now open and close your hand four times. 10, 20, 30, 40. That's a lot. If I had to make you clap 40 times, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, do that four more times. That's how many days he spent without any food in the desert. So, yeah, and that's how, many time, how much time he spent getting ready to do all the big plans God the Father had for him. When Jesus came back from being in the desert, and, I'll, and I'll, before we jump into this, I'm going to show you a few pictures that we have here. So. Here, when he was in the desert, he met the devil, and they basically said, you know, Jesus was hungry, and he said, if you're so hungry, then turn these rocks into bread. And Jesus, though, he knew God's plan for him, and he knew 
not to be tempted and that there was a reason for these 40 days. So of course, he did not. He said, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So no matter how much he was tempted, he did not. They also knew that if Jesus was God, he could jump off there and nothing would happen to him. He would be safe. But God said, or Jesus said, that, um, you know, you will not basically test your Lord. And nonetheless, it goes on until Jesus eventually dispels Satan, passes all the tests, and is left alone. So let's get back into this. So when Jesus came back from the desert, he was ready to start his father's big plans. What? Big plans. That's right. First, he chose 12 men to be his disciples. What are disciples? Hmm? We talked about this last week. Basically, somebody who follows Jesus. Um, and, and that was basically their, their number one focus. So one day, Jesus went to the synagogue. Can you say the word synagogue? It's kind of tough. It's a place of worship. It's like a church. Um, Jesus went into the synagogue and began teaching. The people were amazed. They knew something was different about Jesus. What made Jesus unlike anyone else who had ever lived or ever will live? That's right. Jesus is God. God the Father has God the Father's big plans. That's right. Didn't stop there. There were many days when Jesus taught people what is true about God and healed people who were sick. The Bible tells us there were days when people would come to Jesus for healing all day and into the night. Jesus must have become tired, but he stayed up all night healing people because he knew there was part of the big, it was part of the big plans, big plans God had for him. Jesus knew he would have many busy days talking with, caring for, and healing people. The big Bible or the Bible tells us that sometimes while it was still night, Jesus would go out and be alone and pray. He knew that being alone with God was the best way he could get ready for all the big plans. That's right, God had for him. Jesus wanted to be sure he only did what God the Father wanted him to do. Do you know God has big plans for each one of you too? And let me, we'll get back to the, there we go. So did you know that God has big plans for you too? He already knows what you'll be when you grow up. God knows where you will live. He has big plans, big plans for you to tell others about him and how much he loves all of us. We can get ready for God's big plans for our lives by, ta by talking with God. We can listen to God when we pray and when we read our Bibles. God has also given us, given us moms and dads to help us learn about him. They can help us get ready for all the things God has planned for our lives. How can we be ready? By talking to God and listening to God and charging our batteries. Just like Jesus, we can hear and follow those big plans that God has for our lives. God is always with us, and he will help us. So, boys and girls, I'd like to take a time now to do a closing prayer as you go about your week, to prepare us to go about our week. So, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for everything you've done, everything you've given us, and everything you've blessed us with. Please look out after us and keep us safe as we go through this week. And please keep our eyes open and our ears and everything to um, be perceptive to your plans and that we may follow your path for us. Please allow us to be supportive of our parents and to help them as they become not only our breadwinners and providers, but also our teachers, and please just allow us to um, be perceptive to their needs 
and allow us to help them and just allow us to work hard and work diligently. Please look out after all those that are sick and please provide strength for those that are well um, to help those around us. Thank you, Lord, for everything you do. Amen. So boys and girls, thank you for taking your time today. I had a lot of fun sharing this time with you. And I look forward to next week where we can talk about, well, I haven't looked at the curriculum yet. So, but it will be about Jesus. I can assure you that. And it'll be a lot of fun. So hope to see you next week and have a great week. Bye.